Just getting through each day can be hard. Fear, pain, uncertainty are part of everyone's experience. And yet our essential dignity and the promise of life seem to survive in the face of all suffering and change. Our society, too often characterized simply by its production of material goods and services, is encountering a series of shortages and breakdowns. A general reevaluation of the quality of life is underway. There is a renewed interest in traditional simplicity and purity in everything from food to personal relationships, from the political process to that less definable area called the human spirit. One aspect of this questioning is the growing number of Americans exploring yoga and meditation. They are involved with basic human problems, using intelligence and intuition to touch a deeper understanding of themselves and society. This film is about some of the people who are practicing meditation with the guidance of a guru or teacher. It's so different. It, it just, I, I'm like on top of everything, like noises and people and, 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 and things, they just don't have an effect on you because you're always there with yourself and that's the most important thing. And nothing, nothing seems to bother you. I mean, you always have your ups and downs in your everyday living, but you, you, you sort of have this confidence that you've never had before. There's no sense of a cop-out because in this path in particular, we say that we have to accept the world. We're here, we have to live in the world. First, you have to have something that you can offer to others. On a day-to-day -day living, there are little joys that come with spirituality, with effort, and there are um, continually, continual openings and revelations and insights which make life always a little new, a little fresh, a little broader, a little higher, and uh, a little more satisfying. It's like you're constantly being struck. You're constantly being startled, and nothing's ever the same, and yet you know that there's some kind of continuity, some kind of meaning to life, if you will. Many people go through life without being moved to make a conscious search for what philosophers call truth. To the student of meditation, this search is constant. And as with most of life's problems or challenges, a specialist can be a real help. Indian spiritual master, Sri Chin Moy, is one such person. 42 years old, he is the leader of the United Nations Meditation Group and founder of an international meditation community which has been based in New York City since 1965. Wonderful. Once upon a time, I was something in this force. Of course, according to Indian standard, I was really something, not according to the world standard. But right now, I am asked in the outer world to do the same. I want them to run the fastest in the inner world. What is of paramount importance is the goal, the ultimate goal. And for that, we have to run inwardly as fast as we can. Each year, Sri Chinmoy joins his younger disciples for a day of track and field. According to his teaching, in spiritual life as in athletics, there must be dedicated training and concentration to achieve grace and accuracy in action. As the athlete gradually achieves perfect coordination through concentration and discipline, so the student of meditation learns to bring emotion and intuition into focus. Whether meditation is practiced in the woods or in the city, it is the same. Sri Chinmoy says, During meditation, the sun of wisdom and peace dawns within you. Yoga is not something unnatural. 
It is absolutely natural. It wants to prove in a practical way that God is not only in heaven, but here on earth. The office workers, executives, students, school teachers, artists, and construction workers who are Sri Chinmoy's disciples found that they could describe what meditation had done for them. It's just becoming aware of life and becoming aware of people. And the day should be a continuous meditation. There shouldn't be a moment which is not a conscious meditation. Little by little, as we meditate every day, and we see him twice a week, we notice, or I notice, that I'm so happy, and I feel God's presence so much of the time. Sri Chinmoy says the human soul exists in fact. Spiritual masters can see it and work with it. He says he psychically enters planes of higher consciousness and from there guides the souls of those who meditate with him. Sri Chinmoy says, Meditation speaks in silence. It reveals to the aspirant that matter and spirit are one, that the temporary and the eternal are one, that our life is eternity itself, and can never be the mere existence between birth and death. The Guru writes, Oh my heart, nothing has a more immediate access to the Supreme than your inmost cry. I try to make my spiritual children, who are my disciples, feel the necessity of the living God inside them. God is for say, for them, God is dead. So when my disciples come to me, come up to me, I try to make them feel the necessity of a living God, and I try to help them in discovering this living God. Once they discover the living God, they become living gods themselves. disciples to have fun and share it. So twice each year he asks about a hundred of them to put together an amateur circus. In many ways, the guru encourages his followers to be fresh, joyful, and unpretentious. The guru writes, Oh my vital energy, without your dynamic and stupendous inner urge, nothing can be revealed here on earth. Yours is the indomitable courage which springs from the fountain of emotion. Kill not your emotion, never. We must uncover within ourselves the deepest emotion so that we can become the widest channels for the divine expression of beauty and truth. What we see is the expression, revelation and manifestation of the body. The body is the temple. We have to be perfect in the realm of the physical, we have to be perfect in the realm of the soul. Then only we can be integrally perfect. Now at the circus it was beautiful. Everybody did something that applied to their ethnic group. But the black disciples really wanted to do something that was them, you know. And this dance incorporated all of that. And it was spiritual because they were being free, you know, it was a free feeling of doing something that was really coming from within themselves. And that's what spirituality is all about, being yourself. And everybody had fun, you know, it was a beautiful dance, a beautiful piece of comedy. <laughs>
you cannot teach a child about love by speaking about love. You can only teach a child by, about love by, by loving it. And there must be love in all phases, even the way in which you correct your child or in the way in which you suggest changes. If this is not based in love, the child is immediately aware of it and immediately, to some extent, resentful. And uh, what I have gained from my association with Sri Chinmoy, who is so loving to his disciples in all ways, I've tried to draw from this in my relationships with the children. And when I know that there has been some success is when I see them interrelating with each other, not just responding to me or responding to a given situation, but in their day-to-day -day responses to each other and to other children. These are some of the children of Sri Chinmoy's disciples. Over 600 of his followers gather once a year from all over the world, not as an organization, but as a family. Sri Chinmoy is fond of quoting the New Testament. Unless you become again as children, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. It seems that the, the normal seventh-year days are mm. filled with activity. There's no goofing. There's no just not doing anything. Everything has a direction or a meaning to it. You know what I mean? I, I see it that way. You know, I'm, I'm pleased as punch to coin in a phrase. God is all joy, 24 hours, every moment God is all joy. And we feel that we are God's children. So if our father is all happiness, how can it be otherwise? Sri Chinmoy says, Time is motion, life is action, love is perfection. Martial arts is uh, an intense concentration on physical movements to become one with the spiritual movement which is inside. If you become one with the spiritual movement inside, then your martial arts movements are flowing, like in karate, it's strict, uh, fast, hard, and soft movements. So if you become one with that inner movement, then your movements outside will be sweet, sweet flowing, hard, snappy. and. He doesn't ask you to come to him. You find yourself being there. For example, I did not know that I would find my way there. I was brought there by a friend. And the next thing I realized is that I met a man who was of the spirit. And to what dimension or kind, I had no idea. I'd never meditated in my life until that instant. But suddenly I realized I had an approximate inspiration about what meditation meant and how it could approach the still center of the soul. It's like uh, a tiny flame and a searchlight. Uh, the area in one and around one is illumined far beyond what one was able to do alone, with the result that inner striving, inner progress, and making it count in the outer world is enormously uh, simplified, accelerated, enhanced. It makes a great difference when you meet a real master. It's uh, different from reading books. I had read uh, books about yoga all my life, but now when I met him, everything changed. I have a real grasp on the teachings. And now he has told me to accept life. You know, before I thought that it, yoga was something like going out of the world, going to live in a cave or something like that. Now Sri Chinmoy has told me to accept the world, love the world, and then try to change the world. We differ what he has achieved to aspiring humanity. So in the case of Sri Chinmoy, he felt that the time had come for him to leave his native India 
and to offer his own light, peace, and power to the aspirants of the United States. When I asked him why he chose the United States, he said that he felt that the spontaneity, the childlike simplicity, and the openness of Americans um, was something that he could um, respond to and that he could feed them with his own spiritual um, realization. Here, Sri Chinmoy blesses food prepared by his disciples. He says that every part of human life can be experienced as sacred. There's never a second when you can't feel him. He's, he's there with you like your guardian angel. I can't find words to describe this, this feeling. I feel, you know, it's love, it's happiness, it's joy, it's everything. Everything is good. He's helping me to grow into a real, a spiritual adult, a spiritual, spiritually whole person. It is the transformation of the human into, the, uh, into a divine or spiritual being. I don't know what dynamic means, but I do know that when I look at him, I see not just a holy man, <laughs> but a man. And for that reason, something in me goes out to him. Let me bless everyone. Think of the moon. Well, here's a man that's involved with higher aspects. I don't wonder if he's thinking about me, and I don't wonder when I'm going to see him next. He's there. And in his thusness, I am able to bring to myself something that was never there before. It's allowed me. It hasn't changed me. It's allowed me to just be more of what I always was but didn't know how to be. It's not like the altar painting of the High Renaissance. It's a kind of tribute. It's kind of a, an inspirational act at a moment where you're meditating, but you're meditating in movement. So my meditation is, up until the time I met Sri Chinmoy, movement in my painting and in my body and in my attitude. With Sri Chinmoy, I was able to find a moment of stillness, just like with this object stands for the universe, for the Chinese. It's the still center. And through Chi, uh, Sri Chin Moi, I was able to find the still center. Rock star Carlos Santana says he's dedicating his life and music to his teacher. Sri Chin Moy says that music is second only to meditation as a way to deepen one's consciousness. This pub joy to the daily lives of their students.
Sri Chinmoy says the search for inner truth through meditation demands openness and courage. He who endures dares. He who is faithful to himself dares. Many of these people have just had their first experience meditating with a spiritual master. Sri Chinmoy does not accept as his disciples all who ask to join him. Sometimes he suggests that newcomers seek out other masters and other disciplines. Each one carries this experience differently. For some of them, it will have been an evening of uneasy quiet. For others, perhaps the beginning of a spiritual adventure. Getting through each day can be hard. Common anxiety is gradually replaced by the constant challenge of attaining the goal of yoga, inner peace and balance. Various forms of yoga and meditation have already attracted the attention and participation of millions of people in the West. The teachers transmitting these techniques are growing in number and variety. The impact of this development may go to the heart of our society, helping to transform the quality of human life.